This time I know if our perspectives are going to be talking our posts, reposts, recreation parks and open space, but it's a great place right here in Norfolk. Norfolk is ready to hatch new businesses right downtown. The Christ Museum of Glass is up and running. you got to go see it. And then learn how to get fit and stay fit. You will anyway. I'm not getting out of this chair. Stay tuned for some great stuff right here on Norfolk Perspectives. Welcome to Norfolk Perspectives. I'm Bob Batcher. Okay, is it our post, repost, or what? I got the expert of that, uh, Daryl Crittenton, the our post, repost, recreation parks and open space director. What is it? It's our post. And basically, I just call it, a lot of times people get confused. We just say recreation and parks. That's the easiest abbreviation for it. Okay, because let's do it. Okay, we have six minutes to talk. Okay. And we're going to talk about tall grass and weeds. We're going to talk about meeting <laughs> strips. We're going to talk about fitness. We're going to talk about... Aquatics, swimming, sure. boating. Sure. What yeah. did I leave out? Whatever trees. You like. Trees, therapeutic recreation, swimming pools, cemeteries, you name it, we can talk it, Bob. So okay, cradle to grave. Yep, cradle to grave. Six minutes up. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, come on, give me a break. It's everything. It's the full breadth of it's, life in Norfolk, isn't it? Yes, actually, we have programs that start off with before school. We've even started working with um, a new employee, Sarah Sterling. I believe that's her name, who's actually doing pre-care and looking into programs like that. We have a hand in that as well. So from the aspect of cradle to grave, yes, actually from teen programming, the bulk of our summer camps are for ages 5 through 12. So every age group, we have senior programs, we have adult programs, we have therapeutic recreation programs. So not only do we have diverse programs that are related to age, but actually specialty programs as well. And they encompass every age group. Now, Okay, we hear a lot of talk, especially now with the presidential election sure. going on, as to what role should we be playing in, in government. And a lot of places say, okay, it's potholes, it's picking up trash, it's public safety. Where does recreation, parks, and open space fall into that? Well, two things, well-being and quality of life, Bob. A lot of people can actually have the best jobs in the city. They can actually basically have a nice home, nice neighborhood. But if you don't feel good about yourself and there aren't any extracurricular activities to participate in, which foster well-being and quality of life, then you don't have the whole piece of the pie. Mm -hmm. So part of that aspect is people look for a great school system, they look for nice employment, and they look for things to do. And we want to be that department and we want to provide those activities that people want to come to to do things. Okay. So when I'm driving home at night, and I'm really enjoying the scenery. You've had a lot to play with that. Mm -hmm. But then when I get on my bike and ride over to the fitness center, you have a major part to play in that. Yes, I do. And that is that quality of life. Well, you've got bike trails in effect, and then once you're on your bike on one of the bike trails that we hope to establish in the city, you're going to our fitness center. And at our fitness center, we want to have a full gamut of programs that you can choose from that you feel good about participating in. Then after that, you leave, you ride back down the bike trail, and then after that, we hope that you're reading one of our publications to see what you're going to do next. So, <laughs> Always busy then. Always busy. But let's talk turkey. Okay. Um, I know I was at a meeting. We had a community conversation about, about health, and we had, a, mm -hmm. we had a group of people there sure. that were talking about the level of equipment and they about, you know, in, in one center, how great it was. Sure. They were comparing it, though, to some of the private entities. Mm -hmm. are, you trying to, are you trying to compete with the private entity, too? Uh, we can't Where's compete. Where's that balance? We can't compete with the private industry because private industries can actually fluctuate their prices, their fee schedule. They can do a lot of things. They actually can collect donations. Uh, we can't t take donations or sponsorships. We're not set up for that. We can in some aspects, like with equipment, but we don't, not, we don't have a 501c3 established in our department where we take monetary donations mm -hmm. all the time. But when you talk about public and municipal government trying to compete with the private sector, it's like apples and oranges. It's not going to be that way. Based on the recession, a lot of times we wanted to make sure we could provide services to all at a consistent price that would not impact people who may be losing jobs and who may actually not have jobs. Mm -hmm. While the private sector, part of their 
livelihood is basically a set fee so that their business can survive. So their fees could be a lot higher than ours. And what we try to do whenever we think things out, when we have a new facility, a new program, is to make sure the price is within a moderate level that everybody can enjoy a recreational service. Okay. Now, I know that you're more than just the director. You really <laughs> live this stuff. So I'm going to do a one-minute drill with you. Okay. Okay. You live this stuff. <laughs> we haven't rehearsed this. Okay. I've got a list of projects here. One minute I want to cover. Okay. Okay. Ingleside Gymnasium Project. $1.9 million. It's a college regulation gymnasium. And a very active athletic association in Ingleside was one of the reasons why this project came to fruition. Southside Aquatic Center. Southside Aquatic Center, $6.5 million of construction money. 25-yard pool with six competitive lanes. And I have a birthday room, meeting rooms. And then I have the biggest feature is a recreational spiral indoor sliding tube with warm, heated water. Cool. Oh, time, taking time. Joint school use agreement. Um, that basically is an agreement between the Recreation Parks and Open Space Department and the school system to provide access to facilities where in communities and neighborhoods there aren't recreational facilities. Summer camps, pools, and beach season. Yeah, that's our busiest time of the year. Actually, from Memorial Day all the way through Labor Day, we have all of our summer camps in full swing, splash pads, uh, summer camps, teen camps, and we have some activities going on with walking tours in our cemetery. So we've got a lot going on this summer. Man, you did good. Okay, I got new strategic plan, but we're out of time. Our post master plan, and then helping me out with the heavy equipment in the fourth segment? Yes. You will? I'll help you. All right. <laughs> okay, we're going to see you back here in the fourth segment because you're bringing in some ringers that are going to work me out. Okay, that sounds okay. good, Bob. Great stuff coming. Okay. When we come back, we're going to be hatching new business downtown, and Daryl's coming back to lift weights. All right. <laughs> are finding ways to keep kids active and healthy. Works every time. Get ideas, get involved, get going at letsmove.gov. Welcome back to Norfolk Perspective. You are in for a treat because your world's going to rock. Okay, Zach Miller. Good to see you. Good seeing you. Uh, Sean Evangelista. Great seeing you. It's great How's stuff, too. And Byron Morgan. That is I. Nice All right. You, okay. Can I get in the mood here? Sure. This thing's got to go. <laughs> okay. Now, when they told me that I had entrepreneurs coming on the show, I've been wanting to do that all day long. Okay. Now, I was expecting suits and really, you know, kind of, you guys aren't that. Yeah. We're, I mean, we're coming on here, like you said earlier, we're just trying to basically show ourselves. We're not trying to come in and present something we're not. This is how we work every day, and it's just all about producing and executing an idea. So it's not it's, about the clothes. No. Not at all. Not. No. not at all. That's kind of scaring me, you know. Well, we're working 50, <laughs> 60, 70, 80, 90 hours a week. We need to be comfortable in that. We need to be able to produce. And if we're, we're stuck in something where we can't move around. Um, now, uh, now, Zach, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call you on that. Because uh -oh. I was walking down Granby Street in the 100 block, mm -hmm. and I went past the hatch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He was sitting in there, jiving to his iPhone thing. Right. Yeah. What kind of work was that? Well, I was probably building the building the website, working with HTML code, because that yeah. If you went the other day, we we're probably usually most of the guys in there are programming or um, doing some kind of business development, and so you're either listening to a call or you're listening to music, cause it's just something to keep you sane while you're while you know you're putting in 80 hours a week or something. Like okay, that. now you're founder of Podium Pro. Correct. So where's your Podium? Don't need it. It's right here, iPad. That's it. <laughs> so basically what it is, it's, a, um, it's for speech preparation and performance. It, it allows you to you know, upload a document from Dropbox, which is a cloud-based um, file storage solution. So your stuff is all up here it's, in the cloud. It's in the cloud. Really, there's a, there really is no cloud. It's just on a server in a different, in a different state is all it is. But 
you upload a document and then you can time yourself and basically you, you take a lot of the things that public speakers used to have to use like hardware devices for. Yeah. We just use it, code it into software and put it into one interface on an iPad. So, so it's a little laser things. pointer. Laser pointer? <laughs> yeah, we can do a laser pointer. We can integrate it. We're not planning on it right now, but if there's a demand, we could do that. Actually, it really is cool. We, the church we go to has a, he brings out his iPad, and next thing you know, we're in Israel. Exactly. One of our, one of our uh, part of our markets, a huge part of it is uh, pastors, because a lot of them are switching to iPads now. For sure. Wow. Okay, um, Zach, this was, you kind of hatched, sorry, I had to say that, <laughs> hatched yeah. this idea up, right, of kind of bringing together. Yeah, we had, um, so We Are Titans works with startups all across the world. And you know we wanted to bring it home, so we've put together entrepreneurs and uh, basically in the same room with with other entrepreneurs and developers and engineers and and basically all facets of, of, of companies. And it was how can we take uh, and build an entrepreneurial ecosystem in this area, and then uh, be able to give them mentorship and, and working capital uh, and rent for an entire summer to see how far and how quickly. So you're not going to spend a lot of time on the 100 block of Granby Street because you're flying all over the world. Well, I've, been there the majority of the time so far. Well, I'm, how do you I'm connect people around the world if you're not flying? To Skype. Dad, go on. Cell that's phones. that little camera on your. Yeah. That's cool. email. Yeah. That's cool. Okay, and Byron, now you've so you're setting up a music studio in there, right? Because you're vinyl mint, so you're going to have all these big bands showing up in the studio. Not necessarily in Hatch, but actually online. So Vinylment is a t essentially a tool that allows musicians to collaborate and create music from remote geographic locations. So we're eliminating the need to be in the same recording studi studio at the same time. Holy moly. Yeah. You know you're talking to a guy that spent four hours Saturday trying to find a calendar book. <laughs> I mean, how do you deal with people like, like me who say, you know, come on, guys. Well, if, if there's a piece of technology you're not comfortable with, the best thing to do is just get it and start messing around with it and find a 13-year-old to have you teach you how to use it. I have a 13-year-old daughter, and she, like, set up my business Facebook page for me in three minutes. <laughs> really? Yeah. So you're VCR. Excuse me. I mean, they're It's not a VCR it. anymore, yeah. is it? It, it doesn't blink new. <laughs> <laughs> you have no clue what I'm talking about, do you? No, we have VCR. I think we still have one. <laughs> I mean, how do you keep up with technology, then? Well, the key is to... Find things that you're interested in. You can't keep up with everything. There's okay. so many changes going on. Yeah. So if you're interested in golf, uh, find a golf app or something like that, that that resonates with you. If you're interested in fishing, you know, uh, there are applications and things that develop around those communities. So stay tuned to things that interest you rather than trying to understand everything. Super. Yeah. So, Zach, when, uh, when the manager talks about economic, our city manager talks about economic vitality, um, he's talking about uh, the 100 block of Granby Street, right? I hope so. <laughs> so, I mean, that really is kind of what got this whole thing cooking, was inviting you guys. How, who, how many people are in the half? Five companies. Okay. Five. Now, now, I said, okay, you have five companies. Mm -hmm. How many people are there? Uh, so we have two companies with three people, a company with four, a company with five, and a company with six. But so you roughly are 20. really connected up worldwide. Yeah, absolutely. And the, the end result, obviously, being that each company will grow and start hiring locally and bringing in people. Yeah. I, like, I brought a programmer from Chicago down here, and now he's living in Norfolk yeah. and, uh, you know, contributing to the economy. So, ult you know, ultimately, the goal is to get these to It's the organic the grassroots style of, of producing jobs. Um, in, in the state of Virginia alone, startups produce 70% of jobs. Nationally, that number is 55%. So Virginia is a huge percentage um, of jobs state from startups. And we want to see that happen in our area and see how it can produce and, and become the next mecca of startups. Awesome. You know, about, uh, I don't know, about 115, 16 years ago, there was this guy called Henry Ford who had a brand new idea. Do you feel <laughs> like you're there? Yeah. Yeah. I do believe that. Cool. He, he wore overalls. Okay, <laughs> website? PodiumProApp.com. Then you'll become a professional pu uh, public speaker. You can you get on your way real easily. Website? Uh, you can find Hatch Norfolk at HatchNorfolk.com or We Are Titans at WeAreTitans.net. And the big bands are coming to your place? At VinylMint.com. Vinyl, like the old record, and mint, like a peppermint. I am looking forward to having you guys back on the set, and I won't find my tie. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> We're going to go the old-fashioned way now and blow some glass. Not really, but come back and join us.
Lead paint poisoning affects 1 million children today. If you're pregnant or have young children and your home was built before 1978, you could be at risk. Learn how to protect your family. To find your home's danger zones, the health effects, or just to find help, log on to leadfreekids.org. Welcome back to Norfolk Perspectives, and I have decided to go tie-free so I can be an entrepreneur, too. Ann Corso, Education Director for the Christ Museum of Art. How are you doing? I'm doing great. So you're tie-free, too. I'm always tie-free. There we go. <laughs> and Charlotte Potter, Glass Studio Manager. Hello. But more important than being a manager, you're... Okay, what is a glass blower called? A glass blower? <laughs> makes, I blow. Makes it easy. <laughs> yeah. Okay, should we get all the sick jokes out of the way? Sure. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> is it a steady? It's a steady puff of air. It's like, okay, so have you ever blown up a balloon before? Poorly. Sure. You know how it's really hard at the beginning to get the, bu the bubble started? Right. And then, and then it expands quite fast? Okay. It's exactly the same phenomenon. Now, once you've done this steady and you inhale, what do you do? You die. You, I, I, you can't because you <laughs> no, only no, do it no. once. No, no. Um, so, so that's one of the most common questions that we get in the glass studio is what happens really? if you inhale? Really? People have asked you that before? Or, absolutely. Oh. And so um, we actually have this really fantastic free daily demonstration that we do, which dispels that myth immediately. We make what we call an inversion bowl. We take a, a bubble and we'll heat just the top of it and then we'll suck in and it makes a nice little indentation and it's a, it's a beautiful little object, but it also... We usually get somebody from the crowd to come in to do it for us, and we think that we're putting them into uh, danger, but we never are really putting them into danger, and it engages the public in a fun way. Super. Okay. Yeah. We've gone immediately inside the studio, but where sure. is the studio? Oh, the, the Chrysler Museum Glass Studio is located directly across the street from the Chrysler Museum proper at 745 Duke Street. And for those that haven't been on that part of Duke Street in the last, I don't know, 10, 15 years, it's no longer the bank building. It's not a bank building anymore. But it is a cool place. Well, it's hot, too. <laughs> well, the AC is on, but we are blowing glass. So, uh, Super. Yeah. And um, you came on the sofa. You were in town for about, I don't know, a week and a half, I, I think. I think so. As the education uh, director. And I got it. There's been a big announcement since you came on as education director. Did they tell you that they're closing the Chrysler? Well, it's interesting. We try very hard not to use that C word. We're not saying oh. closed. Because Even though I've read it in the paper, I've seen it on TV. <laughs> We're going out into the community. The okay. museum is undergoing a huge renovation, um, which will force us, yes, to technically shut the front doors and to move the art around. Uh, but that being said, we're taking our artwork, our people, and our programs out into the community. And between now and January, though, you've got some awesome stuff taking Absolutely, place. Absolutely, we do. Um, it is sort of the last chance for the public to see two amazing exhibitions. Um, 30 Americans, which is it's awesome, incredible. It's one of the biggest exhibitions that we've ever done. I was going to say, I kind of came in expecting to turn to the left and look for it, and it was all over the place. It took over the whole museum. Um, it, it's very new, groundbreaking, contemporary African-American artists um, that we're very proud to host at the museum. Uh, but there's also another exhibition that we actually touched on last time, the Baldwin Lee um, mm -hmm. Picturing the South is another fantastic photographic exhibition that will be on through the end of the summer. What I, what I like about both exhibits is it really kind of creates that conversation. Absolutely. And that's what we strive to do every day at the museum is keep people engaged. And as you know, our mission is to bring art and people together. So these are two fabulous ways to do that. Okay, now you can still kind of make some noise. You can still talk. You don't have to be hushed It's quiet. not a quiet place. Uh, we want people to be active. We want them to be engaged. And there's a whole host of programs that we hope will help facilitate that. Now, with the new building... More opportunities to make some noise and absolutely, converse. absolutely. We're still uh, working on some of those plans, but uh, there will be new opportunities to exhibit artwork. The artwork will be displayed in radically different ways. Um, a totally new look to basically the entire museum. So a transformative project. You know, another thing I guess they didn't tell us about is with the economy and all the woe was us. In the middle of all that, you guys are expanding, you're still free? 
We are still free thanks to the generosity of some incredible uh, people in this community. We are free and will be for uh, as long for, as, as it, long as it is possible, and, awesome. I, and I think it's going to be quite a long time. Sure, I got to ask you. We talked about the quiet because I've been be accused of being rather noisy. <laughs> no. When you guys are working, it does look like you're in deep thought. I mean, so what does it do to the artist to have 50 people watch it? That's a great question. Um, well, I have to tell you that I think that, that glass is one of the few mediums, few art forms where the, the glass blower really becomes a, a theatrical performance. Mm -hmm. And there's something really dramatic about just even the process of blowing glass. There's fire, there's movement. Um, and so it's, it's not... <laughs> It's not unreasonable to to want to see that, and so often glass blowers are very comfortable working in front of the public, and and our team is is there for the public. We immediately engage with them, and typically we'll take questions from the crowd like as we're blowing glass. So I'll put on a little headset, I'll be blowing glass and talking, which is sort of like doing one oh, of these cool. a little bit. Yeah, hey, you can do that. I can. Do that. <laughs> and um, we you know we welcome questions as we're blowing. We say, oh, did you have a question over there? And we'll we'll take it as so it's really a conversation, much more of a dialogue. Okay, now I, I remember when the studio first opened, I heard a lot of people say, me included, oh yeah, I saw that up at Jamestown. Right. Now, so is it like that? Well, fundamentally, you know, the, the process of glass blowing has not changed for about 3,000 years. So historically speaking, it is the same. However, I would say that our facade is very different. Um, our glass studio is, is the most uh, state-of-the-art facility in America today. We run everything off of our iPhones. So, I so can, you're in good company <laughs> with the three guys that were just We on. are, we are. I should, they should make me an app uh, probably <laughs> for, for my hotshot. But actually, I already have the app, and so it's a really phenomenal oh, resource. On. We do. I, I can literally, I didn't bring my phone out here, but I can turn on and no, off all the You had to turn it equipment. off to be on the show. I did. You guys made me silence my yeah. phone. I'm sorry. But, um, so we differ in that way. We do not have historical garb. <laughs> Okay. So we're not we're not dressed historically. And rumor has it you're going to have cheeseburgers the size of this table. Correct. Let me show you. Here we go. So um, we have a phenomenal artist uh, visiting artist series for 2012. Some of the best living glass blowers in the world today. And this gentleman's name is John Miller. He's coming to make pop art, very large scale food. So he's going to make everything from burgers and curly fries to even a Dumars ice cream cone. Cool. You know what? I wanted to end this segment on that because I know what I'm heading into. So if I fantasize on a very large Dumar ice cream <laughs> cone and a cheeseburger, I'll be able to pump iron in the next segment. Perfect. Yes. Thanks for everything that you guys are doing. And, and the, it's awesome. And go see the food and go see you. <laughs> Please come to our free daily demonstrations. We have them uh, Wednesday through Sunday at noon every single day. Thanks a lot. Yeah. When we come back, we're going to pump iron, and Daryl's coming back to do it. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Norfolk Perspectives. I'm Bob Batcher, and I'm so pumped because we're going to pump iron in this segment, right? <laughs> Daryl Crittenden, you came back. Yes, I did. You got all this great stuff going on with our post, and now you brought in two of your staff to show us how to get a whole new lease on life, right? Yes. Um, now, you know these guys personally, don't you? Yes, I do. Actually, my trainer was here when I um, first Ooh. came to Norfolk about five years ago. I had a membership at the Norfolk Fitness and Wellness Center. And I have my trainer here. I guess I was a bad student, so <laughs> he got rid of me. <laughs> well, I noticed he didn't. I noticed he didn't put you. Well, oh, that's not bad. Not bad there. And and then we have Jamie. Yep. Jamie is actually our fitness supervisor at the Norfolk Fitness and Wellness Center. And Jamie is definitely a person that knows fitness, and she's definitely an asset to our center at Norfolk Fitness and Wellness Center. And Jamie, you're a basketball player? I you? sure am. So where'd you play? Just I played at Colby Sawyer College in New London, New Hampshire. Okay, you still play? Uh, on occasion. Okay, so a little Only horse? when I just feel like beating up some of these guys <laughs> over here. Ah, that can be done in Canada. <laughs> now, we're going to have some fun in this segment, but one of the reasons we're having this segment is because I heard a lot of trash talk between him and the manager in executive team meetings about <laughs> playing some b-ball and kind of getting out there moving around. Yeah, our city manager said he could dunk a tennis ball when he was in his prime, so I guess I just want to see it. Where yeah. the prime is, so kind of this <laughs> wonderful one. It, we better be able to pump iron if we're going to trash the city manager, but one of the reasons for having this segment on is because the manager is very serious about Norfolk becoming healthy. He is. And it's not necessarily just about pumping iron or playing b-ball or football or watching. It's a matter of moving, right? Exactly. 
um, we really just want Norfolk residents uh, to get out there and take advantage of some of the opportunities we have here in the city and at the Norfolk Fitness and Wellness Center. Super. So I just talked to you out of Pump and I, right? So we can close <laughs> the show? No. <laughs> No, Brandon, did you bring? Where are the weights? We, we bought some weights over here. We want to. Uh, oh, come on, those aren't weights. We yes. a couple uh, exercises that you know, some assistants in Orpah can do at home to uh, okay, get, so get that, fit. So we're not the, talking. Got the baby weights. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> don't complain. Okay, so we're not talking about bench pressing. You can give them the big ones. Pounds. You, get the you get the big ones. You get the big ones. You get the big ones. These are holy. <laughs> Daryl and I get the babies. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so what do we do? Here you want. Wait a minute, he ended up with nobody. Oh, Brandon, come on. So we're gonna spread out a little bit here. All right, yeah. one. so um, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll take okay. one off your hands for you. All right, we'll, we'll demonstrate a couple of just exercises, work different muscle groups in the body, working the, the upper body, lower body. Hurry you know, up, these things out. are getting all right. <laughs> so um, all right, the first exercise we'll start with a, a squat. So I'm gonna be working the, the quadriceps, your hamstrings, your glutes, pretty much everything from the waist down. So you want a nice balanced base, your feet about shoulder width apart. Okay. We're gonna be uh, bending the knees. And sitting down, and you want to try to keep your heels on the ground. Yeah. And pushing back up off your heels. All Actually, right, I hate to it. tell you this. That felt kind of good. Yeah. All right, well, let's do it again since <laughs> it felt so good. Yeah. Get down, push them back up. Try to keep your uh, abs nice and straight. Okay, I got lots try of not to lean for it. Going back down. <laughs> Darryl, are you going to be crooked here? <laughs> push them back up. Yeah, I uh, only got in um, my mic felt. Now your mic. That's hard work right there. Oh, man. <laughs> okay, what else? All right, all right. I got that so one down. We're going to work on uh, some shoulder presses. We're going to be working the deltoids, triceps. So we're going to. Have your palms face Do I have a up. deltoid? <laughs> Everybody has one. Okay. It's, some's just more Everybody defined than others. So. But again, <laughs> the, the key thing is get away from the iPad, get away from all that all right, stuff, exactly. yeah. and just kind of move. Yeah, now, what moving am I around, do? Uh, getting active. So we're going to be pushing both arms up. These things are heavy. <laughs> Bringing them back down. Okay. Blow and uh, you want to exhale as you're pushing the weights up. Yeah. Okay, does that mean yeah, talk so. while I'm pushing up? <laughs> You should be able to talk while you exercise. So is this going to help with my core strength? Yeah, I heard about uh, that on Dancing <laughs> with the Stars. <laughs> it's definitely uh, working the core and keeping uh, your upper body straight while you're pushing okay. up. Okay. Bob says. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, okay. You know what? Keep, let's keep doing this one at a time. All right. Uh, got, I grew up with Jack and Lane, and you know what? We want to hear from you what you'd like to see on TV48. But more importantly, can you finish this? 664 6510, give us a holler. We want to hear from you. And it's a great time to be in Norfolk just because of you. And you guys are great sports. Go to a fitness center.